Look to your covenant, O Lord, and forget not the life of your poor ones forever. Arise, O God, and defend your cause, and forget not the cries of those who seek you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. You're very welcome, not to Mass today, but to a liturgy of the Word on the 19th Sunday of ordinary time. So to prepare ourselves to celebrate this liturgy, we call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call you Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah went into the wilderness a day's journey, and sitting under a furze bush, wished he were dead. Lord, he said, I've had enough. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down and went to sleep. But an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked round, and there at his head was a scone baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. But the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, or the journey will be too long for you. So he got up and ate and drank, and strengthened by that food, he walked for forty days and forty nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. The Word of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times, his praise always on my lips. In the Lord my soul shall make its boast, the humble shall hear and be glad. Glorify the Lord with me, together let us praise his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me, from all my terrors he set me free. Look towards him and be radiant, let your faces not be abashed. This poor man called, the Lord heard him, and rescued him from all his distress. 
The angel of the Lord is encamped around those who revere him to rescue them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. He is happy who seeks refuge in him. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God who has marked you with his seal for you to be set free when the day comes. Never have grudges against others or lose your temple, your temper or raise your voice to anybody or call each other names or allow any sort of spitefulness. Be friends with one another and kind, forgiving each other as readily as God forgave you in Christ. Try then to imitate God as children of his that he loves and follow Christ by loving as he loved you, giving himself up in our place as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we shall come to him. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Jews were complaining to each other about Jesus because he had said, I am the bread come down from heaven. Surely this is Jesus, son of Joseph, they said. We know his father and mother. How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus said in reply, Stop complaining to each other. No one can come to me unless he is drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God, and to hear the teaching of the Father and learn from it is to come to me. Not that anybody has seen the Father except the one who comes from God. He has seen the Father. I tell you most solemnly, everybody who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate manna in the desert and they are dead. But this is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that a man may eat it and not die. I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I shall give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. There is a legend told about Abraham in the Near East. And now according to the legend, one day a very hungry man came to him and begged for food. Abraham rather hesitantly sat him down for a meal. But when Abraham heard him say a pagan blessing over the food, he jumped up and ordered the man from his table and from his house. Almost immediately God spoke to Abraham. Abraham, Abraham! I've been supplying that poor man with food every day for the past 80 years and you couldn't allow him to eat in peace on this one occasion. Now Jesus had room at his table for all who sought him, the good, the bad, the ugly, the indifferent. For instance, when he sought the company of Zacchaeus, who was a tax collector from the Romans, the Jewish leaders were none too pleased with him because, as they said, Jesus had gone to stay at a sinner's house. The Mass, which is our love fest with Jesus, is the place for forging closer relationships with Jesus, but also with each other. Jesus doesn't want any of us to be at loggerheads with anyone when we come together for Mass. 
St. Paul, the Word of God in St. Paul, advises us today not to hold grudges or lose our temper or even raise our voice to anyone or be spiteful. Above all, let us put aside our prejudices and fears and not be rash in our comments of one another. That is not the language of the Eucharist, not the language of the Mass. Now I think the same applies to the global scene. There seems to be growing and worrying division in our world between nature, between nations and cultures, often underpinned by dangerous ideologies. The United Nations itself seems anything but united these days. I would say that a secularist ideology has taken its toll on large segments of our Western culture, which is very much often at variance with the Christian faith. Now the church needs to face up to that and not go along with it. Unity in the church and truth go together and we really do need that unity in the church nowadays. Being one with Jesus in Holy Communion will help to heal division. Gathered round the one table implies seeing the face of Jesus in every man and woman, whether he or she be Christian, Muslim or pagan, and loving them as brothers and sisters in the Lord. Even Christians themselves are divided when it comes to the Eucharist. Some keep harping on about the saved versus the unsaved, Whereas Jesus is there for everyone, and he's the saviour of us all. As it said in last Sunday's Gospel, he doesn't send anyone away hungry when they genuinely seek him. Jesus, the bread of life, is the answer to all personal, family and global divisions. When we receive him worthily at Mass, he will expand our horizons and help to bring closer the day when everyone will find a place round his one Eucharistic table. Happy are those who are called to his supper. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In our journey through life, the Lord feeds and strengthens us by his word and sacrament at Mass. Let us pray to him with confidence. Let us pray for the Church. May the unity for which Christ prayed be deepened through our participation in the one bread and the one cup. Lord, hear us. We pray that the forthcoming Climate Change Conference in Glasgow in November may make us all more aware of the damage done to the environment and how we, in our personal lives, can help reverse the trend. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for priestly and religious vocations in our diocese. May men and women come forward who are strong in faith and ready and willing to answer the call of the Master. Lord, hear us. We pray for people who are ill, especially those included in our bulletin today, and indeed all people who know who are in need of help and guidance. May they be strengthened by our prayers for them during this Mass. Lord, hear us. We pray for the dead, especially those who died recently, Jim Foley, and those whose anniversaries we recall today and in the coming week. May they enter eternal rest. Lord, hear us. We pray to Mary, Mother of the Incarnate Word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. We pause and pray for concerns of our own. Lord, hear us. God our Father, listen to our heartfelt prayer for those in need and grant us the graces we need to live in accordance with your will on earth, and so merit the place reserved for us in heaven. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.